His activity is designed to help you find the relationship between the force applied on a spring and the displacement of that spring. But it's also going to allow you to find the actual spring constant of the spring that you're using. The apparatus that you see up on the board right now is what you're going to use. We call it a Hooke's Law apparatus. The Hooke's Law apparatus comes in a box, at least most of it comes in a box. And it consists of a base that holds up a rod, then attached to the rod is this movable ruler here. That's what we're going to measure our displacement with. At the top of the rod is going to be a little hook with a spring on it. This is the spring. This is the important thing. This is what we want to keep constant because that's what we're going to find the spring constant for. Now, there's also going to be a couple of more things uh, that you're going to use that aren't part of the Hooke's Law apparatus. First of all, there's this little tray here. Okay? This little tray is what we put masses on. We're going to hook that onto the end of the spring. So this tray gets hooked onto the end of the spring right here. And you're going to see there's a little hole in the tray that allows you to do that. And then there's these little, we call them slot masses. They're little disks of masses that come in uh, various denominations of masses printed right on them that we're going to add to this, tr this tray here. So we just literally slide them with a little slot onto this tray and add to the mass of it. Okay? Those little slot masses in the tray are going to come, can't really see it very well, this little green box that you're going to collect at the front of the room in just a few moments. Look at a close-up of this. We want to adjust the ruler such that the top of the ruler, the zero point, is literally at the bottom of the hook of the spring. That's going to be our zero point. We can make our, put our ruler wherever we want. It makes sense to put it at the zero point. We're going to define our zero point is at the end of the spring. So you're going to adjust that. Okay, there's two little tabs on the back of this ruler that you're going to squeeze together, move it up or down as appropriate. Then you're going to put your little hook with the tray on the end of it. You're going to see when you do that, there is a slot mass on there right now, but even if there wasn't a slot mass on there right now, you're going to see that that spring starts becoming stretched. As you put slot masses on it, it's going to get stretched more and more and more. What you need to do every time you put a mass on it is record the value of the mass that you put on it. But you also need to record the value of the displacement. What would the displacement be in this case? Three centimeters. Remember our zero point was the bottom of that spring. We're going to measure everything from the bottom of that spring. So in this case, we see that it's at 3 centimeters. It was at 0 when we started. Now with this mass, whatever that is added to it, our displacement is 3 centimeters. We're going to want to convert that to meters, by the way, but it's OK to record it in centimeters. What's our problem here? What's our problem? Now, a problem is always phrased in the form of a question, right? What do we want to do? We're going to say it's kind of a two-fold problem. What is the relationship between displacement and force for a particular spring? And what is the value of the spring constant for that spring? What's the relationship between F and X for a spring? And what's the value of K for that spring? That's our problem. What are our variables? What are we changing here and what's staying the same? Anybody want to take a stab right now at what your manipulated variable is? I'm going to help you with this because it's a little tricky. Liam, you think you know? Good. Excellent. Um, I'm not going to say the mass of the disk, but you're real, real close. I'm going to say the force, Okay, which, of course, how are we going to change the force? We're going to apply more mass, right? So we're going to say the manipulated variable is the applied force. The responding variable is, go ahead, how far the spring stretches, which is the displacement. Yeah, a lot of times, William, people will say exactly what you did for the first one, right? The manipulated variable is the mass. Well, we are changing the mass, but that's not really the manipulated variable. Okay, what we want to change here is the force. Changing the mass is simply how we go about changing the force. So our force will be the manipulated variable. The responding variable will be the displacement. The control variables, I'm not going to give you those ones. There's one that's critical. We always say that there's you know, a bunch of control variables that should stay the same. 
But there's one. If you don't keep this one the same, then the results you're going to get are going to be meaningless. Okay? There's one that's incredibly important, and that's the one that I absolutely want to see in the write-up. Now, for the first problem, first time, I'm actually making you do a hypothesis. How do you write a hypothesis? I'm not going to ask you to address the second aspect of the problem. The second aspect of the problem, remember, was what's the spring constant? You don't have to hypothesize what that value is, because really, that's just a guess. But I do want you to hypothesize about the relationship between f and x. If the force, blah, 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 then what's going to happen to x? Okay, I'm not going to give you the hypothesis that I would write down, but that's the general format, right? If we do this to the force, then this will happen to the displacement. Your materials, we've kind of already gone through that already. The procedure, we've gone through that as well. Your data table should look like this, although you should have more trials. Okay, I don't have them all drawn here. We should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and at least to ten trials. Record the value of each mass that you use. Not the value of the mass that you put onto it, the total value of the mass, including what you've just put onto it and what you've just, sorry, what you've just put onto it and what was already on there. So put the total mass in there. Do it in grams, do it in kilograms, I don't care, but in the end, when you go to calculate force, you're going to multiply that by 9, multiply the force, the mass in kilograms by 9.81. So if you do it in grams, remember to divide it by 1,000 before you multiply it by 9.1. The displacement, which is the variable x, is going to be measured in meters. I don't care whether you record it in centimeters or meters, but when you go to do your graph, it should be in meters. Your analysis table, remember, we don't want displacement in mass. We want displacement in force. So let's calculate the force. That's going to be grams to newtons. We're going to divide by 1,000 to get kilograms. And then we're going to multiply by 9.81 to get newtons. Make sure that force is in newtons. Make sure the displacement's in meters. And then we're going to plot that graph of displacement versus force. You should get a straight line. Scratch this out. By hand and by calculator, what's the best way to find a slope? Using Excel, right? Best way to find a slope is using Excel. How are we going to determine the spring constant from that? Well, we know that for any straight line graph, y is equal to mx plus b. b is the y-intercept. And that should be 0 here. So let's scratch that off. My equation for the graph becomes y equals m times x. Now x, sorry, my y-axis is displacement. This is a bit tricky. My y-axis is displacement. What's the symbol for displacement? x. So my y-axis is actually the variable x. Does that make sense? I'm not saying that's my x-axis. I'm saying that's my variable x, displacement. M is the slope, and X is my force. Now, what we want to do is come up with an equation from our data sheet that has the same variables, which, of course, is F is equal to K times X. Rearrange it to solve for the same variable. X is equal to F over K. Right, K goes down by dividing. Cross off things that appear in both. What are we left with? We're left with the slope is equal to, not the spring constant, but rather the slope is equal to one over the spring constant, because k is on the bottom there. So you want to find k, get the value of the slope, and then flip it over. Take the inverse of it. Does that make sense? You go to Physics 30, you're going to have to be able to figure out this analysis yourself. I'm giving it to you here today.
If you want to find the spring constant okay, from a graph that you've never, ever seen before, we can do that. All we have to do is get the slope and then take the inverse of that slope. Your conclusion, and then, of course, your sources of error as normal. All right? Any questions about that? Yep. That's up to you. Okay, the question was, if you didn't hear it, should one of our 10 trials be with no mass? That's completely up to you. Okay, if you, I don't want you to go back after the fact and say, oh, wait, it should have been zero newtons when we had zero mass on the end of it, zero, zero meters when we had zero mass. Don't do that. Okay, but if you consciously make that decision as you're going through it, hey, I don't have any mass on it. Hey, this is where it is, zero meters. And you write that down, that's fine. That's a legitimate data point. But it's not a legitimate data point if you kind of do it after the fact. Oh, wait, that's what it should have been. I don't remember seeing that, but that's what it should have been, so I'll write that down. Don't do that. If you do it at the time, fine. If you don't think about that at the time, then that's okay. Just do 10 other trials. Right? We say 10 trials too, Spencer, but, I mean, in the end, you know, we can have 15 or 20 trials if, you know, you're not limited to 10 trials. You just want at least 10 trials. If in doubt, go more. Any other questions? All right, let's get at it.